So the construction for the body of the ewer is made from slab. And I have a slab that's rolled out here that's about a quarter of an inch. And I am just going to take my rib and take that canvas texture out and also I'm still also compressing it a little bit here. You know, this is something else that you can think of. If you, if you are interested in making um, bodies, you know, like this is, I'm going to use this ring to make the body of the ewer. Maybe there is a texture on the slab, but my preference is to remove the texture. But you could really even lay this into something and have a, a very much of, of a textured slab that you drop into your mold. So I will, I'm now going to make two. And you want to start with a little bit more clay than, than uh, uh, mold and you lay it on top. And then I have these two small, I call them poochie bags, but uh, because I use them to pooch this part, but they're basically pieces of um, cotton material that are pretty woven pretty tight because you don't want the sand or the grog that's in them to come through. And um, they're pretty easy to make. You just fill it up with sand or grog, and then you want to keep this very taut and tense in there. So I have this rubber banded and then masking taped. And um, the reason I want this to be nice and smooth was, is because if there's any wrinkles in this, it's going to come across into the slab when I use it on the slab. So I'm basically going to pick it up off the tabletop a little bit and then feed this. I'm feeding the slab into the form. Now I could just um, not lift this edge. But then this part that's getting stretched out would get too thin. As I'm lifting it and feeding it, it helps with an even stretching of the clay. But you can see how I'm getting the volume. And then I'd come back in. And depending on how much volume I want in the piece is how, how much more I'm going to use the, the bag on to get that volume. <clears throat> and because I don't want to keep reclaiming clay, I've just gone along the edge and cut it as close to the edge as possible. But you'll see when I flip this over and take it out of the mold, you can see an edge right in here where that, that's going to be the, where I will match it to the, the next mold, the same mold. Now, um, you know, again, it's your own interpretation. Maybe I'm going to take this pod and put it on a flat slab. But I'm interested in having more volume, so I'm going to put two of these really kind of bulbous forms together and make, I call them pods. So here I go on the second one. Cut it a little bit bigger. And um, you can see, you know, one of these is a little bit bigger than the other, so I'll use the, I'm going to use the smaller one. And then I'm going to cut it on the edge. And then I can flip it over. So I would make a lot of these at the same time with different shapes if I'm, if I'm making some forms that, that require this, I call them the body or the pod. So here's uh, two that I made earlier in the day. Same, same mold, same technique, but they are stiff. They're in the leather hard stage, but they have not started to change color. So they're not, so I know that they're just right. They're, they're much stiffer than what you would think you could work clay. Also, my clay body will take this. You know, there's some, if I tried to do this with porcelain and it was this stiff, I don't think the porcelain would be very happy. But uh, for some reason, <laughs> this clay body, it's very happy in this greenware state that lets me alter and change things when it's, when it's pretty stiff. See, it's not moving anywhere. So I'm going to take my feddling knife and just cut along that line that was left there from when I dropped it into the mold. And then I come back with my sure form. 
and get it a little bit closer. You can see that it's a slight bevel and I'm going to just bevel it down just a little bit more because these two pieces are going to go together. And I'll do the same on this other one. You know, I think this is what's interesting about uh, watching other people work. Um, I love clay when it's really malleable and soft, but I also like it when it's kind of stiff and cardboard-like and I can manipulate it this way. You might hate this, but it's interesting to try to find out if you like it or not. Or let's say you like this technique of a mold, of using a mold this way, but you're going to use it when it's much softer. Like this is the one I just dropped. It's going to change it. And, um, but for me, this, the, it just makes it really crisp and easy to put together. And now I've got these two pieces, and I'll slip and score both pieces. And then I'll, I'll put them together and use um, rubber ribs to join them. You know, in the, in the joining process, you know, now that I'm moved to the tabletop, I think it's really important uh, that you, you use ribs when you're trying to do joining. I've seen people use, take sponges and try to sponge pots together. And that will make the pot look overworked. So you really need to think about um, how you're joining and when you're joining and the tools that you're using. Here's my slip. And um, it's just my clay from all this, all these, the shredded and the trimmings. Once they're, once they're bone dry, I just put them in this container and add a little vinegar to them. I've been using vinegar for, and clay as attaching slip for a long time. It, um, the vinegar is supposed to help with uh, keep things from cracking. And I found that it does, it does work for me. So score slip, put together. And then I'm just going to take my tool, take my rib, and join those. But once um, it's joined together and smoothed out, it would look like this.